Hello and welcome to Texit Tutorials. We all know that JavaScript interviews can be really cool and sometimes painful. Interviewer can ask questions from many areas of JavaScript, from old JavaScript to new JavaScript to browser to HTML to jQuery to algorithm question or data structure or a particular framework related question. And even though you know a lot of things about JavaScript, it's important to be prepared when you go to a JavaScript interview. So in this tutorial, I have compiled top 10 commonly asked JavaScript questions and its possible answers. Now I'll go from easier one to difficult one. And I will also give you probability of this question coming to your interview. And at the end of the tutorial, I will share some some of my personal JavaScript interview experiences, uh, some weird, some fun, and how to answer properly to your interviewer. And lastly, I would love to know your interview experiences and the, the kind of question you get and how you answer them. All right, so let's start with our first question. What is the difference between keyword let and var? Now, pause the video and just think about the answer and I will give you answer right away. Okay, so the answer is, first, var has been in JavaScript since the beginning. Let was introduced recently in ES 2015. So let's say if my grandmother has not upgraded her computer in a decade, let's say, let won't work on her browser. So that's the first difference. Second difference is, let has what is called a block scope, which means a variable defined with let keyword will die at the end of the block it's defining or garbage collector should I say compared to var which has functional scope which means it doesn't respect all other uh, blocks except function block so it will die at the end of the function it's defining not the block and the third difference is that uh, variables defined with var gets hoisted at the top of its function where while variables defined with let doesn't get hoisted so let's look at an exa quick example okay so here i have two variables uh, they're defined they're both inside this if statement the variable v was is defined using var and l with let so if i console log it outside this if statement let's see what happens okay so as you can see here that variable v the value is 2 which means it exists outside this block so it has a function scope so it while variable l won't exist outside this block and similarly let's say if i move this inside the block before the definition of these variables and if i cons and if i run this v is undefined because its definition gets hoisted so but not the value so that's why it doesn't give you error but l gives you error l is not defined so it doesn't exist before its definition so l exists from its definition to the end of this the block is defined which means here where while v is all the way from here to here and I would say probability of uh, you getting this question is about 20%, I would say. All right, the second question is, what is the difference between triple equal sign and double equal sign? So pause the video and just think about your answer. All right, so the answer is, first, double equal sign and triple equal sign, they both are comparison operator, which means they would compare value on the left side and the right side and see if they are equal. Now, the difference is, when you when you use double equal sign it just compares a value it doesn't compare type whereas if you use a triple equal sign it compares value and type so let's say if i have if statement with a string one and if i try to equal a number this would be true because it only compares value which is one but it doesn't compare type Compared to this, if I use, let's say, tri triple equal sign, where it compares a value and the type, so it would say, well, on the left side, I have 
a string and the right side is a number, which is false. Now, if you want to be a really smart ass, eh, uh, you can give a little different answer. So the way you would say is that if I use a double equal sign, what happens is that in order to compare, first, it would try to make um, types on both sides equal. So I have string on the left side and a number on the right side. So it would con convert the one on the right side to the type that is on our left side. So it will try to convert both to string. And so it will get uh, string one to string one on both sides. And that's why it would say true. So it's not that it doesn't compare type. It just converts both to the same type. And when I use a triple equal sign, it doesn't try to convert anything. It just says, well, there's a string on our left side and a number, so it's not true. Okay, the probability of uh, you getting this question is about 30%. The next question, what is the difference between keyword let and keyword const? Just think about it and pause the video. So let and const, they're both basically used to define variables. Const, you can define constants, which means after the first assignment of value, you cannot reassign the value again compared to var, where you can reassign value as many times as you like. You can even change the type if you want, and let would let you do it. So if you want to look at the example, let's say if I have two variables, uh, the first L is um, using let, and the second is using const. So after the first assignment, which is L equal to one, if I want to reassign the value to two and console, it would let you do it. But with const, after the first assignment, it won't let me use the uh, reassign the value to. So if I run this, I would get two for the first and second, it would say assignment to constant variable. So which it won't let you do. If you want to sound a little bit of a smart ass or a JS guru, you can give this answer. So let's say if I define a, a constant, uh, const c, and not assign a value to it, and then if I try to, in a next statement, if I try to set the value, it won't do it because I don't have to really use equal sign to assign a value. When I define a variable, it will put undefined as a value. So it has already assigned a value. So now if I try to do c equal to one, it thinks that, okay, I'm resigning a value. It won't let me do it. If I do console log and run it, it would say missing initializer in const declaration. Let's look at this example. If it's not a primitive type and it's an object, let's say if it's an array, I can modify the array. So if I push three to this array, and console log it, even though if it's a constant, it would let me change its value. And so I get one, two, and three. It doesn't give me error. Because it's an object, it will let me modify the object by, I can add a value to it or remove it. What I cannot do is reassign it. So I cannot do this. So I cannot say C equal to. I cannot do this. This means I am reassigning value to it. So if I run this, I would get assignment to constant variable. So that's why a lot of times when I use objects, I define it with const and not let, so that I don't accidentally reassign a value to it. I can modify it, it's fine. Probability of uh, you getting this question is about 10%. All right, so the next question is, what is the difference between null and undefined. Now pause the video and think about the answer. The answer is they both represent empty value. But the difference is that when you define a variable but not assign a value to it, it automatically puts a placeholder, uh, which is called undefined. So you don't have to do it, JavaScript does it for you. Null, you are doing it yourself. So if there was a value I want to clean it up, I would set it to null. Now the funny thing is actually you can manu manually also assign undefined to a variable but you should not do it. And the second difference is if I do type of undefined the value would be undefined but if I do type of null the value would be object.
probability of you getting this question is about 10%. So the next question, what is the use of arrow function? All right, so let's look at this example. So I have this object called profile and it has two properties, first name and last name. And it also has a method called set name. And what it does, it takes a argument name and it splits the name, which will be full name, into first name and last name. And this splitting is done by an inner function, which is a private function uh, called, oh, sorry, split name. So this particular function, split name, basically takes the argument and then it's actually not, instead of returning what it does, it actually sets this dot first name. Now, because this function is inside this, and also a regular function, it has its own this. And again, it's not a constructor. So it would basically set it to the window object. So when I run this, and if I do profile.freshName, I would get nothing. It's because it's setting to the windows object. So if I say window.freshName and run this, I would get John. So here is a perfect use to use error function. So the way you would do it is uh, you remove the function part of it and use a fat arrow. Error function is also called fat arrow. Instead of window dot, I would say I would say profile dot function. So I would get John. Because it doesn't have its own this, it's automatically setting it for set name, which is profile object. I actually have a tutorial on error function if you want to check it out. I'll provide a link here. The probability of getting this function is about 30%. So this tutorial turning out to be a giant tutorial. So in, in order to keep the sanity, I'm going to split into two tutorials. And so if you want to check out the rest of the tutorial, click on the link here. So this tutorial turning out to be a giant tutorial. So in, in order to keep the sanity, I'm going to split into two tutorials. And so if you want to check out the rest of the tutorial, click on the link here.